We've had a little snow, which is a nice change. And here's an introductory majestic scene from Alan's boatyard. Predominantly, I'm trying to capture said majesty without falling backwards over this new expedition sledge shell I've been working on before heading to Alaska in a month or so. Given the fact I can't do any work on Alan's exterior whilst resins, paints and sealants can't cure in the cold temperatures, plus the fact that scenic time lapses are remarkably uneventful when there aren't any clouds in the sky, we'll head inside for this episode of assorted progression towards Alan's mighty journey northward next year. So that you lot don't become inebriated by the splendour of the establishing shots, we will start with me frantically copper brushing two electrical contact blades. I left you on something of a cliff edge when beginning work on the engine wiring some time ago, but I trust each and every viewer will know that I am preparing Allen's engine coolant thermostat contacts. Why? They, and the old, recently departed terminal connectors, were a bit corroded and sad looking. I am fitting new ones, and I'll use a blob or two of conductive grease to help protect the contacts from any humidity and to encourage a healthy connection. With this engine, that has so far worked smoothly and without complaint, there's always an unknown about components. If I had unlimited cash, I could replace tons of parts, like the thermostat, merely so I know for sure that they are fresh and healthy, but I have to make a judgement call on each. I'm also doing my best to keep colour coding consistent throughout the whole process, but since I'm swapping out 90% of wiring for flexible, low temperature, high strand count silicon sheath wires, they aren't available in all colours. In particular, grey and purple, I've noticed are right out. Five is right out. Now, Once the number I do three, listen to some of you, sometimes. Comment section, direct emails, even those of you who try and slide in via Instagram DMs. And this time I'm going to act. I think, given that the engine bay may become humid, especially when Alan's at rest, an upgrade from my planned block of Wago connectors is necessary. And, as I now continue to pontificate, Whilst I am perfectly happy with the general principle of what I call a Wago block, so a load of inline Wago connectors um, in a block of six, eight or whatever, um, that's absolutely fine up in the main electrics panel um, because it's going to be dry and nice and orderly. I think down here by the engine I'm going to take the advice of some of you in the comment section and a few other people who I've asked um, afterwards about what sort of connector I'm going to use for where the control panel loom from the uh, engine control panel up there comes down to meet the engine itself. And so I am going to now change that over for, I think they, what they call a Deutsch connector. So I'm removing the silicon wires I had temporarily plonked into the Wago block for safekeeping. They come from the starter motor, alternator and the water and oil sensors. Only three sprout from the port side and I've decided to feed these neatly through a flexible conduit and affix it to the turbo hose. This hose won't get hot. And I have decided to use the connectors most often recommended to me over the past fortnight, Deutsch connectors. I've had previous problems and design concerns with some self-assembly waterproof connectors, hence my initial Wago connector block enthusiasm, so we'll see how this goes. The first task is to prepare the ends of all the wires. I'm going for the female terminals for the silicon engine side wires and for the switch panel side the male terminals. They are crimped with a crimping device. I manually check each one with a tug to make sure it's secure. At this stage I have to be meticulously careful and methodical with noting down how the colour coding compares to the original wire coloration and especially on the switch panel wiring loom. The reason being that the manufacturer who charges over a thousand pounds for a replacement loom decided to give all their wires a black sheath, which I judge as somewhere between unhelpful and sadistic. Something I've noticed in the past with these otherwise wonderful fatigue and cold resistant wires is that the extreme flexibility leads necessarily to a lack of stiffness. If you try and push them, using just your fingers, into sprung fixings in a connector like these Deutsches, they will flex too much and not click in. So I carefully used a very thin flathead screwdriver to press on the rear end of the metal terminal and drive it all the way into place with a click. The black wires from the switch panel didn't need this special screwdriver treatment and in fact erred on the side of being too stiff. Low strand counts and it's a bit of a spaghetti mess here as they weren't arranged logically within the white outer insulation. The white and red ends currently have no roll so I've protected the ends with colour coded heat shrink. 
I finally, after triple checking that all the correct connections were with the correct connections, uh, luckily the Deutsch connectors had little numbers on which you can cross-reference, uh, I've got them all complete. And so I'm now ready to connect the harness back up to all of the wires coming from the engine. I only need six of the potential eight terminals at present, but this leaves potential for more sensors, etc. in the future. Whilst the rubber seal at the rear is spot on, you can see that a couple of the terminals aren't currently in a perfect line with the rest. No drama, as a locking clip is supplied that manoeuvres them into the correct position to accept the male pin terminals. So this is the completed first half, and you can see that there's another rubber seal around the leading edge of the connector. I won't bore you with the other side, the female connector with the male terminals within, I simply repeated the process, and then chose the best spot to locate the block. The old location buried between the turbo and the gearbox is a no-go, and these short lengths of cooling hose provide a convenient mount. For those concerned, I can remove the wiring in a few seconds if needed, and a very, very unlikely slow leak from the hose would run under the hose, not over it. I'm using more of my abrasion-resistant Kevlar tape to avoid friction rubbing into the hose's rubber, and for now, a cable tie so that it's secure enough for single-handed clicking and unclicking. Here's some more close-ups of the Deutsch connectors whilst unclicked. The green and orange locking blocks are easily picked out. I only bought one unit, so it cost me a little over £10, but I suspect that they are a lot cheaper in bulk. Friction damage is always towards the front of my mind, especially around the engine where vibrations will be at their zenith, even though the book is very well balanced. As a result, I've used self-fusing silicon tape to cover this steel hose clip since it's proximate to my wiring. There are some lost, confused and directionless wires left in various locations. They would go to hypothetical thermostat gauges and rev meters. For now, I'm labeling and stowing them. And behind this pile of leftover color wires, the more observant amongst you may spot an implement. I upset some of you deeply for tightening hose clips with a screwdriver in a recent episode. So I have sourced a flexible driver dedicated to this very task. I'm cautious about over talking and damaging the hoses but with impeccable judgement, we'll be okay, I think. Once again, out of the blinding light and into the far more intriguing shadows, some of you may still carry an enduring anxiety about the fate of the old, original plastic loom connectors. I'm actually not going to chuck them out just yet. They are the original references for how Allen's engine was factory wired, and may perhaps hold value yet, especially if I mess anything up. The old, stiff, partly corroded wires, though? They can go. But that's not all for today's internal toiling. I've been making gradual progress across a number of mini-projects, which makes for untidy YouTube episodes, I know. But I'll try and only do one, or maybe two, final proper reflex heater episodes, which culminate in me firing it up, so this brief update can sit happily here. The stainless steel heat shield in the heater's recess cured nicely to the Viton rubber insulator, and the protective film can come off. The heat from the angle grinder cutting fried the edge of the film, so that it didn't want to peel away as easily. But soon the reflective steel did all of its reflecting with appropriate levels of reflectance, and I used tough, thick, white bilge paint to smarten up the remaining fibreglass surface. That zone won't be exposed to heat, and the edges, plus any little gaps, have been treated with a bead of that high temperature silicon sealant. You now see the reason why I only roughly prepared the edges of the flaps of fibreglass that bonded to the flat top surface of the gel coated seat moulding. I quickly rasped and sanded it back to remove any sharp edges or lumps and bumps. That's because the next step is to edge the right angle with leftover exhaust temperature rated foil tape and then some smart wipe clean coin pattern rubber matting. For those worried, the separation from the radiant heat of the reflex stove will be significant. Plus, remember that the stoves themselves have a shield built in. The outer shell of steel is itself a shield and is not the actual burner unit which is inside. I now seamlessly pan over to another job to do, and a teaser for an upcoming episode. I'm going to prepare and install the clean water tank, plus all the surrounds, snow melting frame and galley area. What agonising anticipation we must all endure over the festive period. I thought I'd share a handful of final Allen based musings with you. That Gorilla rubber coating has, after the long curing time, ended up being really rather impressive. I do like leaving a little residue from resins or coatings in the bottom of mixing pots so I can check if the cure is complete, but more so so that I can have a play to see how it behaves in the face of prodding and scratching. 
This coating seems tough as hell while staying flexible. Also, you may be wondering why the light has been a bit harsh in some of my recent videos, and that's because I'm mostly be using this at the moment because my control switch is for um, my normal lighting. I'm currently redoing the, uh, the glands. And these long shrouded lengths of hitherto unidentified and rather pricey fiberglass and steel are in preparation for Allen's stern extension gratings and railings. Along with this additional near uneventful afternoon time lapse, it's now far too late to implore you all to enhance the lives and indeed the very futures of your nearest and dearest by buying them my books for the impending festive season. But you can still do so as a New Year gift. What an idea, eh? Bye.